But numbers, Mason. What do they mean? Hello! If you are wondering about Black Ops 1 and if you should buy it for PC, this video is for you. I will educate you on everything there is to know about the game and if you should buy it or not. First things first, the campaign, chock full of suspense and action, the Black Ops campaign is top notch. You follow Alex Mason who, without spoiling anything, even though it is an 8 year old game, is stuck in an unknown interrogation room strapped to a chair. He is forced to relive his past as a CIA operative in the Cold War, while learning the true secret of where he is. If you follow the story, you will notice some fishy things in between the lines. There is a huge twist at the climax, and I think overall, it is a wonderful campaign. Well, better than Black Ops 3 anyways. Zombies! Zombies returned in Black Ops and fixed a lot of the issues with the previous title, World at War, while continuing the story format as well. Some things they fixed are a solo quick revive and the broken knifing which got stuck on the zombies. The map you start out with is Kinor der Toten. It's a basic map, there's not a lot to do other than survive. The second map you get is 5. You unlock it by completing the campaign. It has to be my favorite map in Black Ops 1. It's very close quarters, with one giant training spot in the middle. It's very good for solo, or with a, a single friend. It's really hard with a full group in co-op. The third map you unlock is Dead Ops Arcade. It's an arcade-style zombies game that is played from a top-down perspective. You can access it by typing D-O-A in the console at the back of the main menu. You can get there by tapping spacebar a couple times while in the chair. You'll break free from the cuffs and walk back to the back of the room. I should also mention that you can type 3 arc space unlock to unlock both maps. So overall, zombies in the base game is very fun, with friends or without. And for some people, that's enough to buy the game right out. But for others, keep watching. The Multiplayer Multiplayer returns with a server browser, unlike Modern Warfare 2. This time, however, there's a catch. You can only host servers using GameServers.net. This creates a problem, as you have to pay for all the servers in Black Ops 1. This, in turn, makes for very few servers to still be around. There are around 10 servers on average with players in them, mostly Team Deathmatch on Nuketown. On the plus side, or minus side if you like that sort of thing, the server caps out at 18 players. This means a lot fewer issues with a million grenades being thrown at you. I personally still play the multiplayer in Black Ops 1 regularly on PC. It can be fairly challenging, however it's really worth it. The gunplay is so smooth in this game. And here we go, the DLC. Uh, if you don't play zombies, don't bother buying the DLC. There are no servers running DLC at the minute, and probably never will again. However, if you do play Zombies, you might be interested in picking them up from somewhere like CJ's CD Keys or GameKeys.com or something like that. You should be able to pick them up for about 5 to 10 bucks. The Zombies maps from the DLC are phenomenal. They are more complex with easter eggs that revolve around the story built into the game. Overall, I don't think that the DLC is worth buying just for those zombie maps. Not only because you, the, it was originally supposed to come with the multiplayer maps, which you, you legit can't play right now, but also because if you have Black Ops 3 and you get the Zombies Chronicles map pack, which comes with 8 Zombies maps remastered, then you have basically all of these maps from Black Ops 1 and all of the World at War maps, well, except for Darius, plus Origins, so I think that's a much better deal. Okay, there's one thing I've been saving until the end here, and that is the mod tools and mods in general for Black Ops 1. After like eight years, we finally have access to custom maps on Black Ops 1. Until now, we had access to the mod tools, but not Radiant, and not for Zombies. Now, thanks to some very, very capable scripters and modders, we have a modded version of the World at War Radiant that they ported to Black Ops 1 and 
mess with some DLL files, I think, to get it to work with Black Ops 1. So, props to SE2Dev and Nukem for making game mod. Y yes, that's what it's called, for real. So, would I recommend buying Black Ops 1 for PC in 2018? The answer is, if you can find it on sale somewhere, that is when you should buy it. But otherwise, I think $30, which is what the uh, in Steam price is, I think, right now, is a bit much. If you, get, you can get it on a Steam sale, or like uh, when Black Ops 4 comes out, they'll probably have a Call of Duty sale or something for the older ones, then buy it then. And if you don't play zombies, don't bother with the DLC. If you like the multiplayer though, definitely, if you can find it on sale, buy the base game. So, anyways, if I helped you out, please leave a comment letting me know. Thanks for watching, and have a wonderful day.